Hello everyone, what's going on? I'm Gaff the Master 974 back again today and welcome to another Source Short video. And what I'm going to be covering today is how to make a kind of cinematic camera. But all it really means is that when you look around there's going to be a bit of lag. And not lag in a bad way, but you know, it's kind of a smooth motion from where you were looking previously to where you were looking now kind of thing. You'll see in the video, it would make a lot more sense if you see it in action. So, I do need to give a shout out and thank you to SB737Recaps9 for suggesting this and for our boy Waddles for dropping the code that is going to be used in this video. So, thank you very, very much for that. Really appreciate it. And if you appreciate it, then let them know in the comment section down below as well. So I'm inside of a games solution and what you want to do is go under the client side project and it doesn't really matter if it's client or episodic, we're going to be modifying files that are in both of the episodic and HL2 versions of the code or client HL2 MP if you're doing this for multi multiplayer mods but anyway, uh, you want to go to the header files and open up viewrender.h first and you want to scroll down a bit until you get to the C view setup no, see if you render, excuse me, class declaration over here. And underneath the, well, actually we can change this first. Uh, in render view, um, you just want to change it to TMP view. So it normally reads const C view setup and view. So you just want to change the view to a TMP view instead. And somewhere around here, I think it's actually above us. There's a protected section, yeah, add view to scene, and beneath that is a protected variable, you know, declaration section or whatever. So you just want to add a couple things here. So we've got a Boolean called m underscore has previous view setup, if I can actually spell that correctly, or just ball m underscore has priv view setup, and a c view setup called m underscore priv view setup. I've got my notes off to the side, so that is why um, just being a little confused about it. I just need to know what I've referred to stuff as. And then you want to go out of the header files, go to the source files, and near the bottom you should see viewrender.cpp. And so the first thing that we're going to do in here is find the constructor for, uh, I think it's cviewrender, isn't it? Um, and then just do colon colon to find the constructor, which is right here. And then you just want to add that m underscore has previous view setup equals false. And the next thing you want to do is I find it easier to just do colon colon render view, which finds the render view function like this. Now you see it's not causing an issue. We did change this variable name to TMP view instead of just view. And it doesn't seem to have caused any conflicts, but I would say for the sake of consistency, you just want to keep this the same as what we've done inside of the uh, the header file. Now it is going to cause an issue down here, but we'll get to that very shortly. So at this point, I am just going to do a quick copy and paste because there's going to be a bunch of convos that we need to define, and I'll probably leave it up to you to pause the video so you can copy these on your own if you so wish to and I do need to zoom out so I'll just go to 100% and hopefully that you can read this all a-okay um, but essentially what we've got here is a convo called R camera cinematic which determines whether the cinematic camera should be enabled or not so you just define a convo with the name that is going to be used in Visual Studio that's the name that you type in the developer console in Speechmarks that's the initial value and then any flags if necessary. So I've decided to go with FC var client DLL, which means it's defined by the client, but you can add stuff like S FC var cheat to make it so you have to use SV cheats to change it, or just use zero to mean there's no flags. So we have, uh, yeah, R camera cinematic, then R camera cinematic lag origin, which is another Boolean convo. Uh, our camera cinematic lag origin amount, which is going to be a float value, 0.025, I think is a good amount to use. Then our camera cinematic lag angles, that's another Boolean convar. 
Uh, our camera cinematic lag angles and mount, which is another float. Again, I think 0 0.025 works for that. And our camera cinematic view model fix, which is another Boolean Canva. So that's just the Canvas we're going to be defining and using a little bit later. So what we need to do after this is underneath this M underscore underwater overlay material dot shutdown inside of the render view function, C view setup called view, which equals TMP view. Excuse me, I can't type. I can't do anything about it. And what we're going to do for safety purposes is create another C view setup. And we're going to call this TMP view model view, which is going to equal view as well. And so what we're going to do after this is we're going to have an if statement. And again, just for the sake of brevity, I will just uh, copy and paste that. And what I'm going to need to do is probably do something like this, hopefully. So you see everything. So we're adding is if our camera cinematic dot get ball. So if that is equal to one, then if we don't have the previous view set up, then we set our, you know, previous view set up to be the current view. And then we do have the previous view set up. So set as previous view set up to true. And then if the cinematic lag origin conva has a value of one and the amount is greater than zero, then we're going to set the current view dot origin. So the origin and do that as a lerp with a magnitude of the lag amount. And then, you know, from the previous view setups origin to the current view setups origin, if that makes sense. And then also the same for the angles. Again, if the angles convo is set to one and the angles amount is greater than zero, then just do the same thing except replace origin with angles instead. That's pretty much all that's going on there. And the next thing we need to do is scroll down a little bit until you get to the draw view models function. And just for the sake of you know, brevity again, I'm just going to copy and paste the line, but we can commentate this line and then just paste it with this one. So again, I'm just going to need to do that so you can see what's going on. But essentially we'll do draw view models of, and then in brackets, our camera cinematic view model fix dot get ball. And then there's a question mark temp view model view and then colon view. So my understanding of this is that it checks to see if it's false and if it's false it uses the temp view model view otherwise if it's true it uses view because view has been modified by the cinematic camera stuff and then we just leave the second part what to draw and when the view draw view model as is and then the last thing you're going to need to do is go all the way to the bottom of the render view function underneath g underscore world list cache dot flush and then we just want to say that M underscore previous view setup equals view. So I'm going to try and build the solution. It should build with zero issues. And then you can get into testing. And what we should find is because the Canva that determines if the cinematic camera should be enabled or not is set to one pretty much from the get go, that we should be able to move around and notice this sort of delay lagging effect and stuff so bear with me i do need to change the game capture so it's actually at a 4k resolution i don't think any of the other settings really matter and then what i need to do is also change the game so the game actually gets recognized like so and then all we need to do is load into a map because this is a test project all i've got is sdk vehicles but as you can see when we look around the camera kind of lags a little bit behind. So you can look up, look down, look to the side, spin around. Now, one of the things I would say is if you do like spin around really fast, then you kind of notice that the camera kind of gets stuck. Uh, I think it's because it's rotating around so fast that it doesn't know to continuously sort of look around. But um, another thing that I noticed as well is that if you have something like the gravity gun or the crossbow equipped, then you'll see the client side effects don't really draw with the end of the view model as they're supposed to. 
So for the crossbow, it would be the little sprite effect that you see. It might be a bit difficult to notice, but it's there. And for the gravity gun, it's pretty egregious. It is the effect that you see off to the side. So if we were to go to stuff like the R camera cinematic canvas, if we turn the view model fix off, then it looks pretty weird. Um, you can like turn around and see sides of the uh, the view model that you weren't supposed to. Uh, so you see it's like textured with no draw, which is pretty interesting. So you pretty much need to have that set to one for the view model to follow along properly. And you know, you can change the camera cinematic lag angles and lag origin amount to whatever you want. If we were to say increase the lag angles to one, then you'd probably realize that it doesn't really look any different than normal Source 2013 gameplay. But that's the tutorial, that's how you would add a cinematic camera into uh, Source 2013 mods. Again, massive thank you to Waddles for providing the code to make this happen and to, to uh, SB737 Recap 9 for suggesting this idea in the first place. As always, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I know I've screwed up with this video quite badly, but uh, you know, it is what it is at the end of the day. There's always going to be screw ups in these videos, but yeah. Have a great day, take care out there, peace out, see you later, and hopefully you'll check out the next video that I do. Thanks for watching.